Here we are, back again, making videos. Yes, for the purposes of documenting in a clear and honest fashion, I have decided to make videos as well as photographs. Uh, I'm doing a lot of different experimentation at the moment in the field of electroculture and I'm extremely keen to get this information across to you in an inspiring way so that you too can get out into the garden with this knowledge and give it a try. Um, it's spring, there is of course no time like the present. Righty, so here is one antenna I've got up here. I want to say that this one I have decided is in fact a little bit too close to that walnut tree behind it, potentially even too close to that oak tree. So uh, Yannick, uh, Yannick Van Dorn, uh, the leading expert in electroculture, indicates that um, antenna should not be too close to trees and the way to judge it uh, is you uh, you look at your nearest tree, which I guess in this case would be would be the walnut tree, and you take half the distance of the tree. And if the antenna is within that distance, then it wants to be a bit further out. And I think you know this antenna is probably okay, but I still feel like I'm just going to bring it a little bit back this way, perhaps into this bed rather than that one, just to. Uh, just to get it more in the middle of this clearing where I think it can be most effective. Before, uh, before I get onto the magnetized cables, I'm just gonna show you our paramagnetic tower, which is looking after lettuce, uh, rocket, uh, <laughs> it's a random carrot, and um, yes, and some borage. Uh, so yes, that's that. We've got another antenna over here. This one is um, made out of copper and um, funky spiral at the top. This one's got a crystal in the bottom. And I gotta say, it is seriously boosting these plants, which normally are not as big as the ones at the front of this bed. This year, they are. Yeah, they've, they've been boosted for sure. I got pictures, I've been taking pictures with a tape measure behind, so you can see clearly that this, this one at the front, which is normally the biggest plant, is no longer the biggest plant ever since I put that, that antenna over there. Uh, what else have we got? I wanna tell you as well that I have already dug in a magnetized cable next to this cherry tree, which runs straight across the land. And uh, since then I've made some more devices. So yes, now I want to um, to dig in a cable on this land, which will basically go from next to that cherry tree, chuck all the way across there. And I'm gonna keep it running through here as far back as I can, basically, perhaps next to this um, Jerusalem artichoke. Should be lovely. Uh, do I have any more devices in this garden? I guess the only other thing I want to mention is uh, the occasional Lukoski coil, which I've got around most plants. Most plants do have a Lukoski coil now, and uh, my favorite plants, like this peach tree, for example, get super powered Lukoski coils, which are. Uh, I think it's like six or seven strands. Um, so it's pretty, pretty decent amount of copper there, which I think does have a better effect. In fact, for the biggest trees, like this walnut tree, they've actually got enormous Lukowski coils around them. Um, I mean, yeah, this guy's, this guy's big. And let's see, let's see what she gives us this year. She can be a bit temperamental, this tree. We've had some really bad years and some kind of reasonable years. Let's see if this year is gonna be a great one.
<laughs> so it turns out I, uh, I don't have any basalt in this garden and I want to uh, I want to show you the basalt because yesterday I essentially I plowed that field that I'm about to put the magnetized cable into I kind of uh, dug up the soil a bit cleared the plants I don't want I'm not gonna call them weeds because everything's useful uh, and I sprinkled basalt into the land about what did I do I did about half of this tub so I guess I would call that a large cup half of this tub per square meter of powdered kind of powdered it's a little bit coarse um, volcanic rock that is what basalt is the reason why we do that is because it's um, highly paramagnetic so essentially having basalt within your soil it's attracting cosmic energy into the soil and activating all of the microorganisms in there here we are in the uh, the other garden <laughs> you can see the pyramid over there I'm, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time showing you this right now that is the uh, the pole uh, that I want to whack on this guy just make him a bit taller uh, before I put uh, sweet corn in there so yes for now I just go let me just get this bass out I've got a bag of it here I've already used a fair bit blooming heavy so there we go that's what we're talking about bass out and interestingly you know if you whack a magnet in there it will stick you know you can be 100% sure that it is uh, working right coming back to this garden later for now just gonna focus on uh, <laughs> getting this cable in and yeah I mean if any of you are wondering what, what all this electroculture stuff is about well it's it's a very old way of utilizing natural energy to boost our plants in a in a really really dramatic way uh, it doesn't kick in immediately so to get the uh, the optimum results you want to have your electroculture systems in place for at least three years I would say it seems like between three and five is a good estimate but yeah basically your plants become not only bigger but more nutrient dense and there are studies to prove this so they're bigger and you need less of them to you know get that same quantity of nutrition into your body so you know i mean this is this is so important in the uh the age that we live in now where food is becoming more and more expensive food is becoming uh, less nutrient dense and more franken food you know this this is the way to solve that problem i'm just going to use this very basic compass to make sure my device is the right way around this I also need uh, to get everything set up here first uh, cutters uh, galvanized steel which will be the cable connected to my devices just something for twisting the, uh, the wire now here is one of the, uh, the devices which I made yesterday it's pretty small that is basically I think it's 18 small ring magnets with melted beeswax around it oh yeah i did actually bring hang on <laughs> i did bring some uh some magnets just to show you what they are let me get them out boom you know tiny oh yes one more thing i forgot to put the lakowski coil which is a small oops copper ring um around the outside of these i will add that right now Over here I've got my uh, compass device which as you can see one end attracts the red the other end attracts the black now what we want for the purposes of what we're doing today is for the the end that attracts the black so this end we want that to be facing forward so this will be facing north in, in this direction basically so this will be facing north with the other end facing south so the end which is attracted to the black faces north the end attracted to the red faces south okay so as i mentioned i'm i'm very interested to get the cable into this area 
here right next to this amazing cherry tree which uh, is getting very close to uh, giving us fruit. I'm probably a bit late really with this cable but I'm gonna get it in anyway maybe next year will be will be even better because of it and um, I just want to explain that what I'm doing at this stage is checking the direction we got zero north going this way and uh, I also have a couple of compasses which are basically confirming what my phone says I don't like to use just the phone uh, I think yeah a minimum of two devices is good so um, what I'm gonna do first is whack in some markers uh, and and string I dug a small hole uh, which is at the other end of where I want the cable. So yeah, it turned out that if I uh, if I continued running the cable this way, it would actually uh, I would have to dig up all these comfrey. In fact, I just planted this this little guy. I don't really want to dig him up. These ones are doing great. They're just coming into flower. I uh, I use their root for a tea, and I just don't want to dig them up at this point. So the cable is going to stop here. It's going to run from alongside the tree to here magnetizing this bed um, with these size devices we're talking about 50 centimeters on each side so an area of one meter across the middle of this bed will be magnetized my two markers are in now you can see it runs straight across there I've got my compasses here I'm happy with the alignment and that's where it ends up so as I said, I've already sprinkled the, uh, the basalt into this soil. You can just about see little bits of it in there. I have dug it in a bit and, um, and that's it, just basalt. And I think with this magnetized cable, having basalt in there as well is really gonna boost it even more. So let's see. Next up, I'm gonna dig, dig the trench. Not terribly deep I can't go too deep in fact because the roots are pretty close but I guess that's about you know five to ten centimeters deep so here we are at the north end of the cable I've tried to save this this flower without digging it up and what I've done is I've coiled the the wire around this bamboo and it's also obviously coiled around the other end just to get it a little bit tight it doesn't need to be perfect but it does need to be relatively straight. So up at this end, this is the south end, we've got our device now on the cable, as you can see. Um, what I like to do is to put the opening of the Lukowski coil, which you can see here. I like to put that facing down. That just makes sense to me with everything that I've read about the way Lukowski used them. That will, I believe, be projecting energy that way. So, that's it. Now, uh, now I just fill this baby in. Yeah, last thing to say about this is uh, when you fill it in, just leave, leave the little section at the end because in the end, what I like to do is just snip that. Once this is full of soil, it'll hold the wire in place and you can just snip it take that out and um, it's just nice and neat that way and just because this this Jerusalem artichoke probably heard me say it was going to get magnetized today so instead he's getting um, a spiral <laughs> Which all I do is I just plant down here in the base, around the base. There we go, straight into the soil. Oops, let's just get all of the mint out of the way. That looks good. There we go. You're gonna like that, buddy. You're gonna like that. <laughs> and that's it. So over here, I have now watered. Last point I want to make about the uh, magnetized cables. You can tell if they're working by using dousing rods. So when you walk across a live cable, your dousing rods should 
pull inwards, indicating there's some energy underneath you, uh, as they would if they were detecting water or a ley line. It's the same thing. So, yeah, get get used to using dowsing rods, and uh, in this way, you can verify that uh, that cable is magnetized.